Hello, my name is Juliana Guinharaz and I'm the CEO of Endemolsha in Brazil. Endemol knows very well how to tell stories. We know how to engage the public. We are part of a group called BaniJ, which is the largest independent content producer in the world, regardless of the platform, if it's fiction or if it's a reality. For sure, we've already been on your screen. For sure, you've seen Big Brother or know what Big Brother is. MasterChef, The Wall, Peaky Blinders. A lot of people don't know, but Peaky Blinders is from Andamol. We have Mr. Bean, we have Wife Swap, Black Mirror. We're big and we know how to tell stories. We, are, we have more than 7,000 formats in our catalog. We have 120 producers, we produce in many languages. We are in 22 countries. So, our great expertise, I can guarantee you, is knowing how to tell stories through a variety of productions. It's because of our expertise that Hotmart invited us to tell you a little bit on why the market needs real stories. By the time our brain understands that what it's going to see has a true story behind it, it already begins to understand stories from elsewhere. It begins to look for points where it identifies itself. If it knows or doesn't know the story, or knows someone who has read it somewhere, when it's based on a true story, getting closer to the story is inevitable. You try to get to know that story whether if it's a serial killer or whether if it's a dub ad. Because you also identify with the ads. And the closer you are, the more it impacts your life. But curiosity is what made us evolve. When you take the bestseller Sapiens, which was written by the historian Yuval Noah Herrera, he attributes one of the main factors in social evolution of human beings to the most important of the facts, communication, gossip, to take information from one place to the other. What many of us today criticize in earlier times was what enabled us to first create speech, to take information to others with sounds, to take information about where the next spray would be, where we could pick up some fruit, where the water would be, well, who was born, who died, where we could find friends or enemies. In the end, that was gossip because it was facts that others would told you, things that others would brought you, and then, out of curiosity, you would go after them. Let's say if you were curious, when you were on the road and there was an accident, a fatal one, no matter what, how serious it was, you, you need to pass by the car, you pass slowly because you want to see it. Almost uncontrollable for human beings to wanting to see. And wanting to see was made our species evolve. We want to look for reasons why. And Hollywood is not a fault. Hollywood took advantage of it. They brought up very important stories and made them popular. And when they brought you story based on real facts, you understood that that society had things similar to yours, that a mur murder, that a love story based on true stories was similar to yours, regardless of where you were. So it provokes a feeling in you. And this identification is so important that we have, for example, a super important researcher, he's called Stephen Fallows, and he did a research based on true stories that says, for example, in the film category, the critics' choice movies, no matter the genre, are always based on true stories. Just as he says that uh, the best rated movies for critics and for people who like and praise movies, true stories are always at the top. And it doesn't stop there. Hollywood recognized true stories so much so that the category of best movies always has true stories there. In a year when a movie based on a true story films, we are much more likely to reach the best movie category than fictional stories. This tells us a lot about our behavior.
but just wait a minute since we are here at Hotmart. And I got here and I'm an English teacher and I tell you, this is the method that helped me to speak English. Three years ago, I did not speak English, now I speak. Automatically, you believe it much more than a man speaking English, all full of himself, which is also valid. But when I tell you that I turned this game around, you will believe it so much more. So that's why the market's after real stores. After the 80s, 90s, everything became globalized, pasteurized or standardized. Since 2000, with the strong arrival of the internet, since 2010, an increase already almost in a straight line with the arrival of digital platforms, with 3G, with access on smartphones. Um, from that moment on, no one has succeeded to control speech anymore. So from that moment on, the more traditional platforms lost strength in controlling these courses, and so much so that now they are reinventing themselves, they are telling new stories in a new way. But why? Because we have started to control what we want to see, when we want to see, who we want to see. And if you look at YouTubers or all digital platforms, if you look at what happened, what's happening today, when you connect on OTT and see a content shot in Spanish, you see a content from Israel or Germany, and you identify yourself and you like it, then the barriers were broken. And what I want today is to see myself there, the amount of delivery increased, the amount of content increased, everything we have on our disposal increased, so now the curatorship of what I'm going to watch will be based on what brings me references, what makes me grow, what makes me better, what entertains me, because after all I have time to entertain myself, and then I want that voice that I have, the noise that I can make, make to bring me what I want. There's a study on Kantar saying that, showing that 76% of women and 71% of men still do not see themselves portrayed in advertising, for example. And in fact, the public is increasingly looking to be represented because they want to belong to a tribe. So, if you are there watching this and you want to tell real stories, think about who you're going to have to tell this story, to who you want to talk to. Find a common ground, because that's it. When we bring a reality show, which is at a certain point, we do not control the message anymore. The only thing we can control is the mix of people that we are going to put inside a house. And we know that the mix is important to have representation, to bring all social, socioeconomic and cultural aspects. The most important thing is the mix. And let's make this mix happen. And for sure, you will identify yourself. You'll love and hate because you also hate the guy who has nothing to do with you. And at some point, we are all trying to know how to speak, because it's a new language after all, and the language doesn't develop in two days. So there are a lot of people who are trying to work what, what is called the dark social, which is working behind everything you see, trying to control the speech. My father uh, told me something when I went to get my first job. He said, you'll never have a second chance to give a to make a good first impression. And that's it. Today, first impression is one second and two milliseconds. Or you make a good impression or the person leaves. They will swipe it away. They will click somewhere else. They will change the tenor. So your story has to be good. The person has to believe it, that they are going to give you this time and it's going to be worth it. It has to generate sensations, feelings. It has to become a complete experience. However short or long it may be, it has to bring a journey. For example, we have a case called MasterChef. You can search MasterChef Brazil and you will come up in thousand places and you will understand that the format that was a very traditional thing in 2014, a TV program that was on band channel, today 
It's on a lot of platforms and speaking the language of each one of the platforms. So much so that we managed to transform Master Fash in Master Chef in one category. Just like we say July, Bandai or a Colgate smile. You say it's a Master Chef dish. You say that the person is ready for Master Chef. You say, Wow, this could be a Master Chef. We created a category, not only we did that uh, culinary category, but we created an entertainment category. Category. We created the language on Twitter, we created a language on YouTube. We also helped you to listen to music while you do cook. You see, it doesn't mean that because you have a brand or a message to give, you need to be on, to be on one single platform, one single speech. You have an identity. MasterChef has an identity. We take it as if it were a person who posts a picture on Instagram. And what do we post on Instagram? What makes us happy? Or we put a message on Twitter. And what do we put on Twitter? We put a meme, or we put a sentence. We go on YouTube. And what do we put on YouTube? MasterChef tips or MasterChef reacts. And you know what? People are not leaving. People like to be there. People have no problem when the entertainment brand go hand in hand. Former uh, MBAV marketing director Ricardo Diaz said something that I think I will use, use in several lectures because I found it brilliant. He said, the future of marketing is the future where we stop interrupting and we start entertaining. And I think that's a good thing for everything. It's a new setup we need to have, brand, content creators. And when I talk about content creators, I'm not just talking about large companies such as Endemol. I'm talking about you creating at your own home. I have 35 years in my profession and it doesn't matter how many times I look back and I've already said that in some occasions. Human beings want to entertain, like the Greeks used to tell stories of love, betrayal and happiness and we do the same. The hero's journey, only today we tell the same story in different platforms. We binge watch a series, a movie, we binge watch a reality. But listen, we always have archetypes, and yet what we are doing is turn these archetypes into more human archetypes, where no one is 100% perfect and no one is 100% wrong, because after all, all human beings are like that. Brains need this identity, which is why they need to engage and entertain, because this will be the great tool they have in the future. I love coming up with figures because it's not Giuliani speaking, it's someone who sat down, studied, and it's, who's bringing you a reality. There's a study that shows that for 83% of consumers, entertainment is a crucial need. You understand that video need is water, it's sleeping, it's eating. Entertaining is also vital. Of this 83%, this percentage jumps to 92% when you talk about prosumers. If you don't know what prosumers is, it's the audience range that sets trends. Still thinking about strengths of entertainment today, six out of ten of these prosumers cannot go without consuming content. Fifty-six percent of them stop sleeping to binge watch a series. Imagine the power of content. Among consumers, sixty-nine percent said they would watch a lot more ad if it was entertaining, and that number goes to seventy-two percent of those who say that engage more and remember more the ads that entertain them the most. And when people are entertained with a well-aligned speech, results are incredible. And now comes our new challenge, and I think that maybe you are in this challenge too. What we call edutainment. I heard it in a lecture at MIPCOM, I think, like two or three years ago, and I liked it. Because, in fact, education became entertainment. Aside from your formal education when you go to school and that maybe you go to your first college, from the moment you graduate, your next schools of education will compete in time that you have to be entertainment. So, now, more and more, 
you are going to look for real stories, so much so that what's pumping up in the world of education today is people turning the table, people who became entrepreneurs, people who found a formula to make their business grow, to help you to learn the language or to teach you to how to make your social media and make them grow. There's even courses on how to raise horses. You want to watch that. You want to know something. You need to see a payoff, but you don't want a long and time-consuming payoff. You don't want something that don't let you be with your kids or see your wife or to be with your friends. You want to learn, but you want to have results, but you want it to come in the form of entertainment, something that will tell you a story because after all, storytelling is everything. It doesn't matter to whom, if you're going to take English lessons or if you're going to do a reality show or the next so popular, the next Oscar winning movie, if you don't ter- tell your message well enough, you won't go get anywhere and you really need what is happening on your screen to be entertaining, to bring you information. That's what I hope I brought you today. And I hope you tell your stories. I hope you can tell real stories through your content. Whatever the business or the content you want to do, thank you so very much. We are here for whatever you need.